Urine is useful as a fast-acting soluble nitrogen fertilizer, but useful in the context of a broader soil health, um, which really goes alongside a complete system of regenerative ag, including no-till, including nitrogen-fixing cover crops, uh, tons of compost, uh, lots of intense and grazing, and of course, being the biochar facility manager, I'll be advocating biochar. Here's what we're gonna be covering for the rest of today, tonight. Uh, we'll get into a little bit about detailed composition of urine, a uh, tiny bit about chemistry. Um, I'm no chemist, I'll, I'll do my best. Uh, we'll get into handling best practices, recommendations from uh, uh, you know folks like the Rich Earth Institute and garden applications, stuff that I've done in my own garden, stuff that people say you should and shouldn't do, stuff that Pat, the director of our farm, has done in the past, and hopefully we'll come up with a uh, with some good strategies for you if you were interested in using uh, urine in your own garden. And if we have time, I'm going to dive into um, the historical method of saltpeter production, which is quite fun. Um, and some of my projects that I've been uh, really invested in this year, um, anthroponics, which is uh, uh, an organic form of hydroponic growing, really using urine as a primary fertilizer. And from there, I branched off to growing uh, duckweed, really hoping to have a fertilized, high-protein duckweed that um, is an analog in animal feeds for um, soy or fish meal or something like that. So here we go. What is urine? Um, urine, 95% water, probably 95% water. Of course, all urine is different. Um, it's two and a half percent of that remaining five percent about half of that is a nitrogen rich compound called urea the uh, remaining two and a half percent is uh, mineral salts and other metabolites uh, like creatinine uh, some organic acids in there um, this here this table is data from uh, a German publication about again um, urine diversion uh, uh, I'll share that with you. I've got a link at the end of the presentation for that. But uh, this is their data. It, it's a little bit different than the rich earth data. A little bit higher nitrogen. Remember I said rich earth had a 0.6. Uh, in Germany, they've got a 0.8. Maybe they eat more protein over there. I don't know. Maybe they drink less coffee than we do. Um, phosphorus is kind of all over the place. I, I don't know why they're explaining that. But note here that urine fresh is actually rather acidic. Okay, slightly acidic, a little bit of potassium, and a lot of sodium. I'm getting used to this screen here. A lot of sodium down here at the bottom. Okay, uh, we knew that. We all eat salt. Um, quite a bit of chloride, uh, I assume, coming in with that table salt. I got a, I spent a lot of my time, I told you I was doing the anthroponics, the hydroponics, and I put a lot of early work into assuming that my urine matched these numbers. And then I kind of got a little bit excited and I wanted to have my urine sent off to a lab to have it tested. I did find a wonderful lab that was um, completely willing to work with me on this. Um, and uh, instead of sending my regular run of the mill urine, I got excited and sent my fresh morning urine urine collected in the morning, really the, uh, the stinkiest, yellowest urine that I had. And um, I, I have read online and in many sources that morning urine was, in fact, more potent. Well, it is, in fact, more potent. That TKN is, is a, a measure of total nitrogen. Um, it's up at 1%. So that's um, almost twice as much as what Rich Earth is collecting um, throughout their entire day's worth of urine. Um, and uh, you can see uh, my potassium numbers are really not that much higher. Maybe I'm leaching my own body by drinking too much water. I don't know. Um, phosphorus is, is higher than what Rich Earth estimates, but it's actually still lower than what um, the Germans or, or the Europeans, I assume, are, are getting. Uh, still quite a bit high there in sodium, um, although albeit not as high as I thought. But... Um, uh, let's see, what else stands out? I was kind of surprised to see that much boron. I don't know why. I just, I don't know. I didn't think anything else was in there. So um, that, was, that was exciting to see. Um, anyway, so from this point forward, um, 
I'm assuming that my urine on my projects is um, is one percent nitrogen, which is quite a bit. Uh, okay, here's the really big question. Everybody says, "Okay, urine, that's great. It's sterile." You know, oh wow, of course, use urine. It is sterile. Well, urine is sterile, but only in the bladder. Um, outside of a medical procedure, um, there really is no way of collecting urine without bringing in from the outside some bacterial contamination. Uh, luckily, to our benefit, there's plenty of easy and uh, a natural, almost built-in ways to ensure urine safety. Um, we'll get to that in just one second. Um, another question that comes up a lot is, uh, you know, what about these pharmaceutical contaminants? Um, certain pharmaceuticals, hormones and whatnot, uh, are going to pass through into your urine. We don't know the effect of accumulated hormones on soil. We don't know for certain what happens when we apply them. Uh, people are looking at this. I know the University of Michigan, I believe. Yep, there it is. Um, has, has done a lot of work with um, culturing antibacterial resistant bacteria. So actually adding, uh, I believe, um, um, antibiotics to urine and then uh, uh, seeing how that reacts in the soil. And, and basically what they found out, I'm going to summarize this uh, without having gone into too much detail, but aging urine. Remember when I talked about the, the indigo where, where you got a vat of urine and you just, it gets alkaline over time? That's the aging process. So that aging process actually um, breaks down DNA chains in antibacterial resistant bacteria. Uh, so those DNA chains, the concern is that those DNA chains, not the bacteria themselves, obviously, but the DNA chains of, of dead bacteria in the soil will somehow make its way into plants. And uh, really aging urine is, is the most common and widely, widely used and, and frankly the easiest way of sanitizing your urine. And uh, it is nice to know that that's uh, been shown at least marginally effective there. Um, can biochar play a role? Probably in cleaning uh, urine of pharmaceuticals. Uh, I look forward to seeing uh, research come down the pike for that. I'm sure it will. Aging urine. This is when you take urine and you basically leave it alone. Um, I would say take urine. You know what old urine smells like, probably. Uh, I would recommend if you're going to do this, then you put it in a container and you close it up nice and tight. There's no reason to be smelling urine. Uh, this compound way over here on my right is urea. Urea in water, catalyzed by the enzyme urease, um, over time will yield ammonium hydroxide ions and carbonate ions. So that hydroxide and carbonate ions are what are dragging your pH up. And it's what helps to, we, well, we believe it's the pH shift. Uh, some people do. I, I don't know if that's actually proven. Um, that uh, sanitizes the urine. And maybe it's the ammonia itself. Um, a, a little bit about keeping your, your container closed. Now, if you were to just like, uh, urinate into a bucket and leave it wide open, it, that process is going to happen. Additionally, what's going to happen is your ammonium ions, dissolved ammonium ions in the urine water itself, are going to start to off-gas as ammonia. And that is, you know, for one, it smells atrocious. We all know that. But it's also, um, it's also nitrogen loss. In any of these cases, if you're smelling urine, uh, that is you losing nitrogen if you're going to fertilize with it. So going back to that, uh, let's, let's bring it back to that dye um, project, the, um, the indigo and the uh, lichen dyes. Um, I want to be working with the strongest urine that I got. If you want to do that, I really do recommend that you, um, you know, find a nice tutorial online or, or pick up Jay and Lyle's book. And, um, and collect your morning urine, it really does make a difference. You want that strongest urine possible if you want to um, create your own ammonia for, for dyeing.